Naturally, we think big when we consider extracting the maximum amount of power from an engine. The power of an engine increases with its size. And to some extent, that is unquestionably true. Just take a look at the Bugatti Veyron's insane 8.0-liter W16 engine. That much power was beyond the capabilities of most engines. But as time has passed, smaller and smaller engines may now produce more power. And two businesses are currently dominating the market in this area. Koenigsegg and Mercedes-Benz are the two companies. The former of the two is possibly the most bizarre, however Mercedes also has a lot of experience with little engines. The ability to extract a significant amount of power from a remarkably small power unit has been demonstrated by both businesses to the detriment of their competitors. It does frequently raise the question of why more engine manufacturers globally do not employ comparable practices with their products. It may be more amazing to produce all that power with a small engine than with a large engine that produces a lot of power. But what is so unique about these engines? We are aware that when it comes to cutting-edge supercar engineering, Koenigsegg may be the masters. It is quite astounding what they can accomplish with tools like the Jesco and the newest CC850. The small electric motor that was initially created for the Gemera was one of their best works. The Quark is another name for this little motor. Likewise it is outstanding. Amazingly, the business is able to extract 335 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque from a motor that weighs just 63 pounds. That is simply amazing. However, the tiny friendly giant, or TFG for short, which the business markets, may be even more stunning. That which is inside the Gemera is the genuine ICE. It has an engine with three cylinders and a 2.0-liter twin turbo. Obviously, it seems a little ordinary. However, you are wrong. With 600 horsepower, or 300 horsepower per liter, this tiny engine produces ludicrous power. The Toyota GR Yaris 268 horsepower three-cylinder engine serves as a comparison point for this power's position as the next most ferocious three-cylinder engine. Koenigsegg's ability is even more remarkable when you take into account the fact that the TFG doesn't even have a camshaft. Another business whose use of engines absolutely astounds is Mercedes. The AMG1, which effectively converts the 2015 F1 car engine into a road-going hypercar, is undoubtedly the most remarkable. A 1.6-litre V6 engine, which alone generates 566 horsepower, is also at the core of the AMG1. The car has a total output of 1,049 horsepower from all of its electric motors combined. It's obvious that its F1 knowledge was helpful in this situation, however keep in mind that an F1 car uses the same engine. Inside the 2015 W06, the 1.6-litre engine has a maximum rev limit of 15,000. Mercedes doesn't simply reserve its little yet powerful engines for its supercars though. You sit up and take notice when a business manages to squeeze 603 horsepower out of a 4.0-litre V8 in its new AMG S63. Sure, they have more displacement to work with here. However, a 4.0-litre V8 is unquestionably on the lesser end of the V8 spectrum. When you combine the additional hybrid power, you have a vehicle that is incredibly powerful while yet maintaining the high standard of elegance we've come to expect from any Mercedes AMG. It's astounding, to put it simply. We can see that Koenigsegg stands out more due to what their engines are capable of. When the next most powerful engine is in the GR Yaris, it is remarkable that they can produce 600 horsepower from a little, 3.0-litre engine. Although the AMG1 engine is smaller, Mercedes-Benz has, of course, built engines fitting the current F1 specifications in the past. There may therefore be a slight advantage for them there. Koenigsegg has proven over the years that they are not afraid to innovate. Without a doubt, we think that more manufacturers of engines need to reach this standard. To begin with, it aids in keeping the engine bay's packing organized and tightly packed. Likewise it will minimize the car's overall weight, particularly as more supercars are being equipped with electric motors. However, seeing these manufacturers get such high levels of performance out of merely 1.6-liter or 0.0-liter engines is a little bit more astounding on a fundamental level. The two businesses are currently only slightly in the lead over their competitors. With such little engines, no one else even comes close to matching this level of power. Meanwhile, let's find out how Ferrari made the 208 sports car's tiny 1.9-litre V8 work. Ferraris evoke images of immense might. Big engines come to mind. And we consider supercar performance that is unmatched. 
Cars like the Enzo, La Ferrari, and SF90 Stradale are examples of the ideas we hold. Ferrari has a reputation for occasionally fitting a somewhat smaller engine in its vehicles though. It doesn't do it frequently, though it does enjoy it when it does. The Ferrari 208 from the beginning of the 1980s is one vehicle that stands out for its tiny engine. A typical Ferrari model from the end of the 1970s and the beginning of the 1980s was the 208. Whether it was a coupe or a Berlinetta in its GTB guise. Or perhaps it was a Spider in its GTS incarnation. The 208 is known primarily for its little engine though. The 208 featured a number of little motors inside that served to make it a unique little automobile. The 122 CIV8 engine was one of those tiny engines, a little engine that could nevertheless generate a lot of horsepower. An engine that, although being small, was somehow manufactured to fit in the 208. The 208 was a typical Ferrari of the time. Its wedge-shaped design and pop-up headlights were symbolic of the time. We can see how low and little it really is when we compare it to modern Ferraris. The Pininfarina 308, which came before it, served as a major inspiration for the 208's design. The cabin was essentially the same as the 308 GTB, although the doors had scallop intakes for the engine compartment. The 208's frame was composed of a tubular chassis. Other characteristics of the automobile included independent suspension and disc brakes. Wishbones, coil springs, and hydraulic shock absorbers were used for the suspension. The 208 also has anti-roll bars in the front and rear. The 1980s 208 wasn't going to break any speed records, however it was a stylish vehicle with some unique tiny engines. Although it defied everything one might actually expect from a Ferrari, the corporation had its justifications. This resulted from an odd luxury tax. The fact that Ferrari was able to make such a tiny engine work is amazing, and they did succeed in doing so. Four Weber DCNF carburetors were used to fuel all the V8 engines. Along with the turbocharged variant, forced induction contributed to the extra power. The Marinello business made an impressive effort. Clearly, they shouldn't have been required to perform this task. Despite a sizable amount being created, it can be challenging to locate one of these in exceptional condition. Although it was never the company's fastest automobile, the small engine Ferrari 208 was a fascinating car. You don't see little engines working inside of supercars very often. Nevertheless, in actuality, this was more of a sports vehicle than a supercar. Its speed was a little disappointing, but it was due to the tax that compelled Ferrari to build such a tiny engine in the first place. However, the 208 is an extremely appealing Ferrari, which cannot be disputed. And the timeless design of its era, one we ought to treasure because of the V8 engine's improbable diminutive size. Having said that, do you love what you just saw? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.